The free people of color of antebellum New Orleans were a third caste, neither black nor white, neither slave nor with all the advantages of free men. And yet, in New Orleans, because of its Spanish and French background, free people of color managed to create a community that excelled that of any other American city, both in the slaveholding South and in the supposedly free North. Here, the men and women of that community acquired property. By the Civil War, they owned two-fifths of the houses and buildings of New Orleans. They were educated, they succeeded in their trades, and many of them were quite rich. Among the areas that they excelled in were the arts. They were very talented musicians, writers, and artists. The most interesting of those artists to me is Julian Hudson. His father was an Englishman, his, his mother was a glamorous quadroon. His grandmother had been the slave of a white man by whom she had children and from whom she inherited property and money. His mother and his grandmother lived side by side in houses on Bienville Street right off Bourbon. There was no segregation in that early New Orleans. And from there, Hudson was educated and looked after by these two strong women. He studied with an Italian painter in New Orleans, and he went to Paris twice using a, a, an inheritance from his grandmother. He was quite talented. He was not at the top of the field. Certainly, he was not a Thomas Sully, for example, but he was quite good. And what he really showed in his painting was individuality. He showed each sitter as an independent sort of person. If you met one of those sitters today, you would recognize them right away from his portrait. He had a gift for characterization. Nevertheless, in a racist society, New Orleans might have been the best, but it wasn't perfect, he never had the same success that white painters did. He was very disappointed by his financial circumstances. In 1844, he died in mysterious circumstances. We still don't know how or even exactly where. Nonetheless, his body of work that he left behind is quite a monument. There are two of his paintings at the State Museum, one at the Ziegler Museum in Jennings, and two in a private collection. All of them represent his soaring ambition and the triumph of the human spirit over racism and other adversity. Mm -hmm.